All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this Gigabyte Aero 15. I don't know if there's another model number on here. I don't see one. So we're gonna go by that name, Gigabyte Aero 15, all right? Uh, oh, actually, yeah, it also shows here, Aero 15. Okay, so on this laptop, the SSD went bad, so we're gonna be replacing that. It uses a M.2 PCIe NVMe. Um, we're gonna be removing all the screws. These are T5 or Torx 5 screws. Okay, so just remove all the screws. Keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way you do that is when you take them out, just put them on your desk in the pattern that you pull them out. I put them upside down like this so they stay in place with the head down. All right, these screws look like they were kind of stripped a little bit. So you wanna make sure you get the right screwdriver. Don't try and use a different screwdriver or you can damage them. Luckily, my screwdriver can still pull them out. Otherwise, you have to use like a screw extractor or something to get them out. All right, so just put them in this rectangle layout and then there's one in the center here. Okay, so we're just gonna go along and remove all these screws. Okay. And you get the idea. So usually what I like to do is go across in layers. So there's four on the top layer two on the second layer. This screw is, seems to be stuck, so we're gonna leave that there if it doesn't come out. I might have to use a magnet, or maybe there's washers on those. So there's three along here, and then there's four along the bottom. So for some reason, the three in the center didn't wanna come out. I don't know if there's washers. I might have to use an actual magnet to just pull them out. So we'll see, because my screwdriver doesn't seem to be getting them out completely. Uh-oh, this screw seems to be different. I don't know if they use a different screw. Hopefully I didn't damage my screwdriver. Let's try using a T6. I don't know what's going on. For some reason there's a T6 screw here. I don't know if the customer opened this and then lost one of the screws and they put a different screw because it definitely looks different. So actually, all the screws might be T6, interesting. But for some reason, the last screw wouldn't work at all with the T5 screwdriver. So these actually appear to be T6 screws, okay? Hopefully you didn't mess up your computer trying to use a T5 screwdriver and then, yeah. Let's see, so this, this screwdriver bit got, might have been a little bit damaged, we'll see. But yeah, looks like we have to use a T6, all right? So, Let's see, those want to stay in. Let's try with the magnet. Okay, the magnet gets them out. So they aren't held in with washers, they're just kind of stuck. All right, so again, you want to keep the screws in order, but in case you didn't, it looks like the middle one is longer and then these two back here are also longer. All right, once we do that, we're gonna pull off this cover. I'm gonna try with a suction cup. So we'll see if we can pull this cover off with a suction cup. And nope, it's not budging. So we're gonna leave that there. Let's see here. So this cover, it looks like it's right here. So I'm gonna use my fingernails to do this. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna try with pry tools. So what I do is I get my fingernails in the gap there and I'll usually pull and use my thumb on the palm rest and then push while I pull with my fingernails out. So here you can see it popped out really easily. Okay, just like that. And now we can actually pull this cover up. So while you're getting this cover open here, you're gonna wanna go along the side. You can use pry tools and then just slide it along. Uh, let's see here. It looks like you wanna be careful with the ports on the side. So just pry in between them. You don't wanna pry at the ports themselves. Okay, so most of that side's out. Let's go over to this side and do the same thing. Okay, just pry at the plastic that separates it. So. As you can see, there's the plastic here, plastic here, so that's where you would pry it. All right, so let's see here. Why is it still stuck here? Um, looks like it goes up here, but it's kind of stuck, so. Hmm. Let's see here, can we get in that gap? There we go. All right, let's go to the other side. It's probably same thing. Oops, I clipped it back down. So, yep, same thing here. These clips are a little bit more tricky, but there we go. Okay, 
flip it over and now the back is a little bit stuck. Usually you can kind of remove these by kind of wiggling and pulling the case, but on this it seems to be stuck as well. So there's a gap here. I'm gonna just get my fingernail back there and see if I can pry this up. It is holding really well, so. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you gotta pull the cover towards yourself a little bit and lift it, and there we go. All right, so these parts are really dusty, so I'm gonna have to clean that up and then we will uh, come back and put this back together. So here you can see there's one stick of RAM. So there's two slots so you can add another stick of RAM if you'd like. The cover is a little bit difficult to remove but it's not too bad. Um, and I don't think they give the model number of this RAM. You might have to look it up but this is definitely DDR4. Oops, let me turn off my charger. My phone's getting hot. Okay, so here you go. So I don't know the specific, um, I don't know the specifications of this RAM, but here you can see the model number. You might want to look that up and then you can find the exact matching one, but it is DDR4 or PC4 RAM. Just make sure you get the smaller uh, kind, not the kind, the long ones for the desktops and you should be okay. Um, I'm not too sure with these cables, so I don't want to risk pulling them out. But if you're going to mess with cables, you want to disconnect the battery and then press and hold the power button. I wonder if this is the same model I worked on before where I had one and then someone recently asked about the battery because this battery isn't like held in place. They said their battery was glued down. Um, so this is actually a video or a laptop I've worked on before. So, hmm. all right. So we are going to be upgrading the, the SSD here. So it has two slots. There's a NVMe uh, SSD slot, and then there's a NVMe and a SATA slot. So these are both M.2 SSDs, but this one supports both M.2 NVMe and PCIe, uh, as well as SATA. Um, a lot of people ask about A or like M key, B key or whatever. Um, to me, that doesn't mean anything because as you can see, this NVMe SATA port it's using the same slot as the NVMe only slot. So it doesn't really mean anything. So don't worry about what type of uh, connector it uses, uh, but worry about if it's NVMe or SATA. That's the most important part. If you put a SATA one in here, most likely it's not gonna read. Or it might read it, but it won't actually work properly. Okay, so anyways, we're just gonna clean out the dust. Um, I have worked on this model before, so I do have a video up of that. Um, just search for Gigabyte Arrow 15, I guess. Um, it's been with my business name or my YouTube name. And you should be able to find it. So I'm going to clean the dust out. I'll come back and we'll just swap the SSD out. I don't know if putting this um, thermal pad thing will help or make it worse. Because it's weird that they're only um, putting the thermal pad on this part. So the rest here is going to stay hot. So I don't know if having uneven heating like that is a good idea. But um, yeah, anyways, uh, we're gonna put this back together. I'm gonna uh, first clean out the dust, put the SSD, and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. We cleaned out the vents, as you can see. There's not much dust on it anymore. Okay, so we're gonna be just swapping the SSD out here. So it looks like it uses, I believe that's a PH0, but let me try PH1 first. Yep. All right, so we're gonna use a PH or JIS-1 screwdriver to remove the screw here. Okay, so there's just the one screw. Take that screw out. Once you remove the screw, the SSD pops out. In some cases, they put a thermal pad underneath and it sticks, so you might have to slightly pull it up. But once you do that, you can pull the stick of, um, yeah, the SSD out. Um, again, the RAM, I'm not too sure what this is. I'm assuming it's either 8 gigs or 16 gigs. I think there's a 16 here, so this is probably a 16 gig stick. Um, I would recommend getting a second stick of RAM because it works better. It can run in dual channel. If you only have one, it actually runs at a reduced speed. All right, because it's just all by itself. It's not working with another. So I found that these crucial SSDs, the M.2s, uh, PCIe NVMe SSDs, are the best um, price to performance ratio. This is 500 gigs. Um, I'm not gonna say the price because the price always changes. But um, 
yeah so I usually find that they're good price and they're good quality so all right so the SSD comes out like that it has a little clamshell thing I just popped that open then grab the SSD out and we're just gonna put this one in okay so I don't know about the thermal pad if I should put that back on there it's kind of weird that they're only putting it on like half the SSD like that um, I mean I'm guessing it's because the controller is right here so underneath let me see at least I would think that's the controller so there's the, I think this is the controller and then you got the memory there's all these memory chips the bigger rectangle ones so they probably put that there to try and keep the controller cooler um, I don't know if I should put that on there. That's... They cover this all with a sticker, so I can't tell. But I guess we'll just... I don't know. We'll just put it on there, because that's how they... I'm assuming the manufacturers know that these things run really hot, and that's why they put them there. But uh, usually all these SSDs, they come without a thermal pad, and they don't say to put a thermal pad on. So I don't know if putting this will cause more issues, or... I don't know. But... uh. All right, we'll just put that and hope it helps with the performance. Okay, again, at an angle like that, and then push it down. Okay, make sure it's in all the way. I like to push the chip while I'm holding the slot so it doesn't rip the slot off the board. Put that down, put the screw in. Make sure it's all lined up. Okay. I'm unscrewing it first and then tightening it back down. There we go. All right, so we got the SSD in place. Here you can actually see where the SSD makes contact with this. And that basically pulls the heat out into this uh, metal casing. All right, so that's pretty much all I'm going to show because I did do this model before. So if you need more help, you can find that video. Um, or if you need help finding it, just let me know and I will post it in the comments. But uh, there you go. I'm going to close this back up. Just put it back on top. Snap all these clips back in place. Okay, just, all you have to do is make sure it's all lined up and then push it all down. Looks like it's good. Okay, there we go. And then we just put back all the T6 screws. I'm getting a call right now, but I'm going to call them back. Alright, so now we just put back all the screws. wonder how they strip the screw so much, because even with my T5 screwdriver, it works. So I don't know what they used on this. They must have been using like a T4 or something. So. Alright. And I don't know in my other video if I used... Um, a T5 and all of the screws came out as well, so I don't know why this one corner one was having issues. It's kind of strange. I guess I'll find out when I watch the video again. Oops, I put this one too low. Okay, I always like putting the screws back where I got them if possible, even if they are the same size, just in case. Sometimes the threads are slightly different and then it causes the screw to go a little bit further. So that's why I like to put the same screws back. And usually it's not an issue, but if you put one of the screws that are too long in the wrong spot, so right now, as you can see, I accidentally put these too low. If I put the, the longer one from there into those, then you can actually cause damage to the laptop. So, all right. so there we go. Just get all these screws back in. And that's pretty much all there is to this. So, hopefully, this video helped. If not, um, try and find the other video for this model. 
that I made. Um, or if you need the link, just let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.